Hello, welcome to Trucking Answers Live. Holy mackerel. Can't believe we're going to go live today. It's Sunday. Happy Father's Day to everybody. Hello to everyone. We're going to talk about personal conveyance or whatever you want to talk about today. It's up to you. Thought we, because they changed those laws about personal conveyance, so I thought we'd start out with that. They're, uh, they're changing it now so that it doesn't matter if you're loaded or not. So what they're doing, they're changing over from whether you're loaded to what the truck is actually doing. They want to know, what are you actually doing with the truck, not is it loaded? Are you moving it for personal use or are you moving it to further the uh, benefits of the motor carrier, as they put it like that? So as long as you're moving in an off-duty that doesn't further the benefit of the motor carrier and your carrier allows it, well, then they're going to allow personal conveyance use. Now, if you're a company driver, that could be a problem. Like where I work, they don't allow any personal conveyance use of the vehicle. They say, tough, go drive your own car, apparently. But if your carrier allows it, then it's okay with them. Now, you have to be relieved from all work of the motor carrier, right? And it can't be of any commercial benefit to the motor carrier. And then they'll allow personal conveyance for like, laundry or anything like that you want to go to the movies they actually say the movies like drivers are going to the theater a lot apparently that happens not sure you can also find safe and reasonable parking at the nearest place now that could be in the direction that you're going if you're loaded at a shipper receiver you're allowed to drive under personal conveyance to find the nearest safe reasonable parking for you to park if you're taking a 10 hour break now if you're just going there you know to, for a hot dog or something like that that's not allowed but if you're going to go there and then take your 10 hour break you're allowed to log that driving time as personal conveyance now here's a big problem i see with that if you go to the nearest place and it's full this place could be full it happens a lot you go to the next place and it's full uh, you don't have to bobtail to the, uh, let me move this here, I'm, there we go. Yeah, right, you can bobtail to the movies, right. Now, it doesn't have to be full. This play, It's a full, you go to the next one. How do you prove later, how do you prove later that it was full? That is a real problem. I don't know how you would prove to the DOT that, that it's full. I don't know. What do you do about that? Uh, touch the buttons, there we go. Okay. Uh, I'm just getting through this, hang on a minute. There we go. Okay. Now, how would you prove later that it's full? I don't know. What if you had to go to three places and you're past three truck stops? Because they say the nearest reasonable place. Yeah, it was full last night, but when they stop you, maybe it wasn't full. Proof is another story. Proof is always the most difficult part of this. Proof. Holy mackerel. Now, there's no limit, right? If you're going home, like uh, if you want to commute, the commuting part, they're not putting a limit on the commuting. Right, they're not, you can commute, if you live in Miami and uh, you're in Oklahoma City and you're emptying your own operator, you want to head 1,500 miles home on your own dime, that's not a problem. As long as you don't have the, uh, as long as you don't have any, you know, you're not furthering a commercial load, you can go home. The bill for the e-log exemption has not passed. They're working on it, as they say. The stuff in Congress, super slow, of course, super slow, but... It's getting, it's gaining a few sponsors here and there. They do want to pass it. There's several different, I'm sure you've heard about it. There's several different bills. Some are owner operators and 10 trucks, some any fleet under 10 trucks. There's a lot of different bills. It's always small fleets they're trying to pass it for to get people so that they can just run a paper log, which uh, everybody would like so that they don't have to mess with the hundred different kinds of electronic logs. But people, some people have asked me if I can help them with theirs, but there's a, over a hundred different electronic logs. I don't know how each one works. I'm not sure. I'd have to go through each and every one of them. Okay, so if you want to enhance the operational, if you're enhancing the operational readiness of your load, you can't do it. That that's not possible. So anything, if you take, if you're taking the load somewhere and that's going to enhance the load, they're saying no on personal conveyance. Another thing they say no on is taking your truck to the shop. That's specific in there. So you're home, even an owner operator, and you go, I'm going to take my truck down to the shop. You're supposed to log that. Now, will people log that? Probably not. But if you take the truck to the shop, they don't allow it. And here's another one on the commuting. You can go from the shipper, from the receiver home, 
from the terminal to your house, from a work site, as they say, like you deliver at a building or whatever, it doesn't matter, back to your house, commute, no problem. If you go to the terminal and say your car's at the terminal, they specifically list going from a shipper receiver work site to the terminal as driving time. That is not allowed as personal convenience, conveyance. Ironically, if you go from the terminal then to your house, that is personal conveyance. If you went from the work site to your house, but going to the terminal is always has to be logged. I don't know why they do that. If you're going to go home anyway, I don't see what the problem is. Many people park at uh, park at the shop, right? Park at the terminal. We don't. We can't take our trucks home, so my car has to be there anyway. That cannot be personal conveyance use. They always have some kind of weird quirks. Okay, and any uh, any other thing that you want to do off duty, like your off duty time, is fine. You're parked for 34 break. You want to go somewhere? No problem. They're looking at what is the load actually doing. What are you? Are you trying to make the load go somewhere? Or are you just trying to get your laundry done or get some Chinese food? That's always the best part of it. So as long as you're not doing the commercial benefit and you can do this safe parking. I love this safe parking. So you go from the shipper and it doesn't matter how many hours you have. It says regardless of the available hours. So even if you're only at 10 hours, you could go from the shipper to find safe parking if you're going to go take a 10 hour break on personal conveyance and that won't. Then you won't eat up your hours for 70 hours or anything like that. That's been a real boon to uh, to this benefit. And it, it already went into effect of end of May, and they've already published it on their site. Now, getting the DOT officers trained on it, well, that's another story. You wouldn't want to argue with them on the side of the road. I've seen a lot of that. That's, that's never a good plan, even if you're right, because if you get the ticket, you're going to have to come back and fight it. It could be on the other side of the country. That's not something that you want to do. So I wanted to get into that personal conveyance. What does everybody think about that today? Any any thoughts on personal conveyance and electronic logs? Uh, is everybody liking them so far? I get the impression the answer is no from many of the comments. They're just doing what we should have been doing in the first place, as I always say. But there's a lot of problems with them. People, they break down on the road, and we had a couple of that just last week. Yeah, that's an everyday truck stops everywhere in the country, right? We had a guy break down his, his electronic log, stop working in the middle of his day. What are you supposed to do? Well, he has to fill a paper log out, which you're required to have with you anyway. And although here where we are, they can email you your logs. So we can get the logs emailed to us 24 hours a day. If you can't do that, you have to recreate your log from memory for the last seven days on a paper log and have it with you and you're supposed to put a notation on there uh, recreated as some to that effect you know that from memory as close as you can you remember what you're doing six and a half days ago at 3 p.m. okay we well have to put that down on a log and have these paper logs who knows how long it is, a half an hour to fill all those out I don't know as best you can and then continue on the paper logs until you get your electronic log fixed and then we have a paper, which you're supposed to have with you, That's you fill out and it says, my electronic log stopped at, and it, we have just a blank space at this time, and you sign it, and I've notified the company, and you have that with you. And it's a total disaster when the thing stops working. Normally, they've worked fine. This is the first problem that we've had with them. When it stops, it, you know, then, and theoretically then, right, that half hour, that's log time too, right? So you log all this time while you're filling out logs for the DOT because the electronic log that they make you use is not working. Then you have to come back in and get the thing fixed. You have eight days to get it fixed or you're supposed to fill another sheet of paper out. That has been uh, not as great as I thought it would be. The changeover to the ELD from the EOBR, the electronic onboard recorders that we had, hasn't been that smooth. The electronic log is not working as good as the old electronic onboard recorder system that we're still using in some trucks, like my truck has the old system in it, which I like a lot, which I've finally gotten back from the shop as well, which is very exciting for me as it spent a month at Freightliner. And uh, when I asked them what they thought was wrong with it, uh, they didn't know. It just had a bunch of lights and they go, well, we don't know. It's fixed now. So that's pretty hopeful that it'll work another week or two before it goes back to the shop considering it's a 2018. I don't know what to say about that. Uh, my company has a very strict 
social media policy. So I don't talk about where I work. We're here. I want to talk about trucking. If I say anything about that, and they'll and if they find out, they're like, "Oh, well, you don't speak for us." And so that's why I never say where I work. I have been driving for thirty years, but I never show the trucks or anything. I'd rather talk about trucking as a whole rather than you know what I'm doing because if they find that out, it's a huge problem. Some companies are very hinky about that. I could find myself out on the street, even though I've been there for many years. That's just how it goes at this place. Some of these places are weird. Once you get into a huge corporation. Then they uh, they have all these little policies, and uh, they can't. Nobody in the company, like at most places, can think beyond their policy. And you have a dispatcher that's 22 years old, of course, who just graduated from college and knows everything. That's that's uh, at many places. I thought I didn't think there'd be this many people here today. I thought everybody would head home for the holiday, for Father's Day. Here in uh, Middle uh, Lafayette, it is going to be over 100 today with the heat index. Anybody out there that uh, doesn't have an APU or where the company doesn't allow them to run the truck certainly should be on their phone looking for a job today, today to find a place. There are many places that still have these stupid idle policies that don't let companies idle. I don't understand it. I, I would rather run an APU on the road. Even in the hot weather, it always keeps you cool. No problem. I never had any problems with them when they work good. The ones that actually blow the cold air, not the electric ones where you got to plug in. I've seen the electric heater kind, never like that. You know, my first truck, somebody, uh, I just saw the old Peterbilt, right, was a 1975 white road commander that uh, I learned to drive on. A cab over, white is an old company for new people that never uh, drove one before. That's just a disaster. It was not great, but... You got to learn on something manual steering if everybody remembers manual steering no air conditioning right 10 speed huge steering wheel because of the no power steering that's really something mm, that's a good question and <laughs> there's no vacation there's plenty of vacations right i get five weeks of vacation here plus uh, my birthday and anniversary day are paid holidays can you drive with one eye you know that's a good question uh you don't have any depth of vision but they don't test depth vision but they do test you eye by eye hmm you got I know you only ought to have a couple of fingers because we got a one guy that's got one finger his third finger and his thumb only left and so you can drive with that apparently one eye I'll have to look the one eye up which I will write down here so that I can look up if you have one eye I'm not sure about the one on the eye patch on the pirate not sure can you drive with one eye I don't see why not I don't know I'm not going to say if you can do it or not. I'm not sure. You know, we had we just hired a guy. That's interesting. I, everyone should know how to drive a truck with a manual before an automatic. I agree. You should only learn on a manual. They just hired a guy here who's only automatic, which I thank you very much. I appreciate the videos. I do appreciate you saying that. We had a guy with only who only can drive an automatic. The first one I've ever seen. He's got the restriction. He learned at U.S. Express. I think he said he went to. And they only have automatics, and so he got the restriction on his license, and so now here he can only drive an automatic truck, which is only about half of our trucks. And they sent him somewhere else to go get a load, and but in his car, and so he's going to go take that load. And that truck was a manual, and he went inside. He goes, I can't drive it, and it was the only truck there. <clears throat> what they ended up doing is take a driver that had just left like 30 minutes ago. They turned him around, brought him back to switch trucks with this guy so that he could take the automatic truck and then this other driver took the manual truck which was not his truck I don't understand going through all that rather than just hiring people that can drive a manual every driver no matter what should learn on and be able to drive a manual shifted truck now we have some drivers that have only driven nine or ten speeds or whatever and that's okay here we don't we got rid of the last 13 speed a few years ago and it sat around a lot there were only about a third of us that have been driving any length of time that can uh, that could learn how you know that could drive the 13 and an 18 speed that's that's not I guess that's all right because you don't need to learn that one but you got to at least be able to drive a manual so that you can get in a truck and drive it you know I never understood going out there that driving and then you are can't drive some of the trucks it's like going to a job and go I can only do half the job I want your, this job, but I can't do all of it. I'm not ready for this job. Basically, what you're saying is you can't do it. And so, and I said, why don't we train this guy? And so I thought they were going to do it. Oh, yeah, we should do that. And then they never do it. They have never said anything more about it. 
we should train him, get him licensed, and get this manual, get this automatic restriction off of there. I, I never even knew why this state started that. I guess so that they can get people, so that they get, can get people to drive. I mean, they went with manuals for the fuel mileage. I see that, right? I'm over eight miles per gallon in my truck, in my automatic. But I just don't get it. Drive a manual. If you don't know how to, if you're going to truck school, learn how to drive a manual. Learn how to drive a manual. If the truck school is only automatics, no way. Don't do it. If the truck school says, oh, well, we can teach you both. You want to learn the whole thing on a manual. Now, I guess I'll say how old I am, right? When I learned to type in high school, which I don't know if they do anymore, first year of typing was on manual typewriters. And the instructor said, that's so we can get your finger strength and you can understand how all that works. Then you get to go to the electric typewriters. It should be the same in a truck. Everybody can drive the automatic truck. We just flip it in D and go. I have a very huge instructional video that's like 20 seconds long on that. Driving the manual is another story. You need to know what you're doing. It's just ridiculous that you come in with an automatic. Another, You should get all your endorsements as well as I go off topic on this. Get all the endorsements because the tanker doubles, triples. That's just a written test. You never know when at some point in your career when you're going to need the uh, endorsements. I've used all the endorsements at some point or another they go hey we got this tanker over there can you go get it and bring it back here yes i can but you need the endorsement to do that you absolutely need it doubles trip i've run rocky mountain doubles and uh, yeah i you know i sh next live video i'll bring i have a rotary phone in the bedroom that i will bring out here okay that kind of stuff you're gonna need right there right you got to be able to drive it you just never know what you're gonna do with it get the hazmat get everything get all the endorsements through they stay other than the hazmat they stay on there for your whole career they never go off there if one time you pull something and they pay you extra twenty dollars the endorsements five dollars you made money on it it never it, it never matters you should always get all here endorsed doubles triples tankers hazmat all get passenger if you can get that motorcycle because you're going to want to ride around on a bike because it's super cool right but get the doubles triples tanker for sure it's a written test you can study it if you're truck school you're going to truck school and they don't offer it or whatever you can study that online even my indian in indiana which is like super behind we're like prehistoric we don't have any we don't have any you know we're like still living in the 1800s okay you can, we have our book online the the cdl book so you, while you're learning and all that you can go online study it but when you go home go in take the test it's just a written test and bingo pow it's on your license it stays there your whole life 10 years later 20 years later you never know oh doubles yeah right i can go do that Tank, i can go bring this this tanker back no problem doubles it'll be i could teach it it's simple right but you know that kind of bring a tanker back yeah but you need the endorsement that's that's what you have to do and yeah there are places that only if you only learn on an automatic you don't get the you don't get to drive manuals that's a restriction like glasses on the back automatic i think it's an a no i'm not sure i gotta look at this okay there's a restriction for it uh for that you can't so then if you're driving a manual right you're not licensed for it it'd be like driving a tanker without the endorsement so now to drive a manual, right, you got to have that off of there. That's crazy. That's just crazy. The hazmat test is, a, what, 100 bucks. You got to go to the background check. So if you got 10 felonies, uh, you may want to stay away from that, you know, the face tattoo, whatever. But otherwise, you, can, you should get the hazmat, too, because you never know when you'll need it. You know, and some of them, no. Okay, has the bill for 18-year-olds to drive? No, that has not passed yet. That they're talking about because the American Trucking Association uh, is talking about a bill to allow 18-year-olds to drive interstate. They can drive intrastate now. So eight, even 18-year-olds can go get a CDL and drive a local, basically a local, but intrastate. It's on Texas, right? It's 900 miles across. You could have a pretty good job in Texas driving intrastate. Driving interstate is not allowed. You have to be 21. They're thinking about passing it so that 18-year-olds, because ATA companies can't get drivers they can't get drivers because they don't pay good and a lot of them are you know they don't 
pay good to drivers. That's why they have such a high turnover. And so a lot of people have written me, oh, I drive at Werner or whatever. I drive US Express. I've been here 10 years. It may work out for some people. They may do good there. But places with huge turnovers have a big problem. There, you know, when a place has a gigantic turnover, there's a reason for that. A lot of trainers there aren't good, and maybe a lot of their policies aren't good. So they, instead of changing their policies and paying more and actually getting trainers that have more than six months' experience, they want to go ahead and pass the bill so that they can get 18-year-olds because they figure if you've been 18 and you go get a job, then suddenly pay six, $700 a week, well, that they'll be happy with that, and then maybe they'll stay. And so that's why they want to get that, but that hasn't passed yet. That's probably more iffy than maybe the 10 people. Yeah, you know, I was just saying, that the 10 carrier or less, that might pass. That might go somewhere. There's a large push for that to get small business, basically it's small business is what they're saying, to be exempt from it so that they can paper log it. But they have to fight the ATA. The ATA does not want that because then they would have all the trucks with electronic logs and smaller owner operators and much smaller carriers would have what they would call a business advantage because the drivers could drive like they used to, right, with the AB log like we used to run, you know, in the convoy days when you'd have the, you had to make sure you handed the correct logbook out to the officer when you gave it to him. Uh, can I see your log? I'm not sure. What time is it? Right. So you know which one to give him. So we don't want to get too far, you know, into that. Well, the government, I don't know if the government, you know, the truck, there is, no, as I did a video, there's no truck driver shortage. Plenty of people get their license every year. They don't stay. The average person only stays 3.4 years in the industry. That's according to the Department of Labor. And then they're out of the industry. It's not that they quit their job. They quit trucking <clears throat> because they're not trained good. They're not trained goodly, right? They're not trained properly by people. They're not really told what to expect. Some people, even we get people that are trained because their factory went, uh, you know, kaput, went to Mexico or whatever. And so then they get free training and trucking is, of course, a huge industry. And so they go into trucking and they're like, oh, you know, I'm training. And I've asked a, com so, a few of them I've had this, you know, as when I'm training people. And I go, Wait, you know, do you really like driving? And, you know, a lot of them don't even like to drive. A lot of people don't like driving. I'm like, well, what are you doing here if you don't like to drive? Well, this is what they sent me to do. So if they're not really into it, they can just they'll just be booted out. They'll just basically boot themselves out. So the but the shortage there's enough people. They're just not you know put in the right way. If you're not trained properly, then you get out on your own. You're gonna be very frustrated. You go to a company that has a trainer and they immediately put you in the sleeper and start just teaming the truck. So you would sleep all night. You drive all night. That's how it usually works. And then they're up all day and they never talk to you. That's not really. It's hard to train you from the sleeper. And so then six or eight weeks later, they put you in your own truck, and heck, you don't have any idea what's going on. You weren't trained properly. There's a lot of things you're trying to figure out, and it's very frustrating, and you quit. You go to a couple companies. Eventually, you're like, forget it. I can't make any money. And part of it is because you don't know what you're doing. So you're making $500. You're sitting around a lot. You're not getting good loads because you're late a lot because of things that you're doing that you weren't trained in. It isn't really your fault. You just weren't trained properly, and you leave. And so you're out of the whole industry. And it's sad. You've lost a great career that, you know, could hold your whole life. And that's the large carrier's fault. And to get around that, they just want to have 18-year-olds. So remember that after a nine months at some of these companies, someone who's still 18 could be a trainer. Theoretically, they could be a trainer. They could be the next trainer of the year, get that sticker from Swift and put that on the truck. That's pretty good. Trainer of the year it was born in... Uh, 2000 yeah 2000 that's really something to think about the next trainer of the year was born this century could be born this century that's really something that's really not something that we want that you know i don't think i think to be a trainer you need five years experience that's what i've always said you should have to have five years over the road nationwide no tickets no accidents you want the best people to be trainers the best people. And once you uh, achieve that, then you have to go to more training and then you can be a trainer. Maybe even an endorsement on your license. Maybe. 
people don't like the government in on it, but maybe there should be a way. Like, I am a truck school license. I'm a licensed truck school instructor as well, which I don't know if I've ever mentioned on there, right? But that's a special license in Indiana. You can't just go teach at a truck school. You have to go take classes, show your proficiency, and go there and get a license. Maybe that should be the same thing to get uh, be a trainer and uh, any company maybe it should be a license endorsement so that they monitor your driving record and that you know if you have 12 tickets and 16 accents maybe you shouldn't be a uh, instructor you know i've seen this thing at swift as we get in swift um something about star driver or something you ever seen that on some of their trucks power driver I forget what it said but some of the trucks have something on there and i'm like what does that mean is that i think th i think that means you've been there 60 days i think that i think after six because after nine months at Swift, you actually become the CEO, I think, because you're the longest driver there. I'm not sure. I shouldn't pick on Swift so much, I guess, but it's just so easy to do. But I did. I have seen that on their trucks where it said something about Star or something. I forget what it says on there, and I thought, what the heck does that mean? You know, then that usually that kind of stuff is in lieu of pay. They'll say, well, instead of paying drivers extra, we'll put stickers on the trucks, and then they can drive around with that. And that only costs us three dollars. And then if they quit, we just peel it off and give it to somebody else. Always, when you see that kind of stuff on there, uh, when there's forty things on the truck about the driver, that's usually because they don't give them any bonuses. They don't pay them. They so they put a bunch of stickers on the truck for them instead of paying them off. Which a sticker, you know, that doesn't pay my bills. I would tell my company, look, you gonna do that? Why don't you pay my electric bill for me? That uh, you know, stickers don't pay the bills at house. Log trucks are exempt in Mississippi. Log trucks. Oh, okay. Log trucks. What? Only in the in trust state Mississippi are exempt from logs on log trucks because all the logging going. That's a possibility. I mean, some states do. So okay, yeah, some states do. Like, there's some coal exemptions and stuff. I could see that, right? They should do that. Where's those? Uh, Virginia right? I went in there and picked up for. Uh, it's some plants, all that paper mills out there and stuff, right? So it'd be kind of the same idea, right? Uh, it is vital to the economy, right? It absolutely, it's vital to everybody's economy. Look, my paper, my yellow papers, right? So, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So that's a good idea. But here's the thing: if it's all about safety, why is one exempt and one's not exempt? It's either safety or it's not safety. Like this driver is not more safe than that driver because of what he's hauling. So proof of that log exemption is perfect proof that these things have nothing to do with safety, right? It's the same way with hurricanes. There's a hurricane or a big disaster, like, okay, drivers, you can drive as far as you want, no problem. Doesn't matter. You're not, uh, you're safe now. You're safe. Don't worry. You can drive 40 hours and uh, drive all you want. So that's proof that isn't about safety. The laws are about making money for the DOT and for the government, everybody. It's about making the money. So uh, we need you now, but pretty soon this thing that we thought was not was safe here is in an, in three weeks, it's not safe anymore. And we're gonna write you huge fines for it. But right now, oh man, we're thirsty. You better start bringing us loads of water down here because we're, we're all flooded. We can't get any water or sewage or food or anything. That kind of thing is ridiculous. They, they would say, well, no, it's unsafe. We can't have drivers driving, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter there's floods, right? Drivers can't be driving. It's totally unsafe. They shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff. We all know that. It's all, all these kind of laws are made up. And I encourage people to follow the law always, right? Because getting tickets is bad for your wallet and it's bad for your business. Well, look, I think on, uh, okay, short hauls versus long hauls. On the road, right, I want the longest haul possible right my best load on the road other than my alaska trip was going from i always love being in the san francisco area because ghirardelli chocolates is there not only do they give me a bunch of free chocolate which is just what i need to get fatter they those loads usually went across the country that load would go to carlisle or to albany new york out of there and it was a drop and hook that kind of load is perfect because you can just cruise every day. You got your five days or whatever figured out. You're cruising all the way across the country. So these short haul things, some drivers like them. If you got paid a lot for stops, though, maybe some places I've seen fifty dollars a stop. So if you had a ten stop load, I guess you know that would work out good too. It depends where you are, what you're doing. But as a driver, right? I like driving. I don't like doing stops. Now, I want to load all the way across the country. Then give me a load all the way back across the country. Now, I did a video, maybe I didn't release it, 
miles or percentage. My first job driving was a flatbed where I got percentage low, 25% then, okay? And so the problem was I got nothing if I was empty. I got 25% of the load. So that may have changed now. I haven't run percentage in a while. So these long loads, I wouldn't get paid anything because I'd have to go 300 miles to go get a load. And so that they go, well, you got 25% of that too, which is nothing. Then you got 25% of the load. So I think mileage, because at least a load, you know what the miles are when you start and what you're going to make. On the percentage also, I don't get to determine the rate. So if they take a cheap load, you know, and I get 25%, that just hurts me and there's nothing I can do about it. I can't set the rate. Maybe if I was in business for myself, I could do that. So they take, they go, well, this only pays us a buck and a quarter. I'm like, well, what are you taking a dollar and a quarter load for? What are you trying to do here? Right? We're trying to run a business here, not go broke. So, but I can't control that. They go, well, that's too bad. So you get 40 cents or whatever, you know, because expenses or whatever, you know, so the percentage, I don't get to control the percent. It works out better the other way though, also. If they get a $3 load, right, you make a lot more. So you have the upside potential and downside potential. I don't know about empty miles. If you had a lot of empty miles, they're going to have to be a way to pay you for those empty miles too. Because otherwise, when you figure it all together, it doesn't make that much money. And uh, household good miles also, that's got to go. On all this mileage paid, those that's got to end. Household good is crazy. Practical miles, it should be really door-to-door -door miles. When your phone can figure out the exact address and get it, then fine. But otherwise, it's got to at least be practical miles so you can get the miles you want. And if you're running a hazmat load that has to go around the city like Indianapolis, they should pay for the miles around the city, not through the city, because you can't go there, so they shouldn't pay for it. <clears throat> I like that brokers are paying deadhead. I hope it's a good rate for not, you know, well, over 100, I mean, it should pay all, your miles should be paid. If they're sending you this many miles to go get a load, that many miles should be paid for the load. But, you know, now if you're using a broker, right, you have your own truck, so that's a different story, probably. As a company driver and percentage, I just didn't like it because I was also afraid I was being hosed by the company. How do I know they go, oh, only paid $1.50? How do I know they didn't get $2 or whatever for it? And they're just cutting themselves in on it. And then I get it. And right, I know you can go down there and look at their rates like that, like anybody does that, right? And how do I know that's even true? The mileage, at least I know what I'm getting. I'm getting my mileage and I'm getting the miles that they send you. That's what it pays. And they're pretty close. They're pretty close. These practical miles is pretty close most days. Sometimes you'll get one and I'm like, how are you supposed to get there for that? Oh, well, we routing you down this cattle route here. And uh, if you just make sure you close the fence on the dirt road behind you, and then you can just go right down there, right? But mostly, mostly they're pretty close. And you get the same pretty much now loaded and empty. I think I've seen one or two places where they split it out 30. I thought I saw 30 cents empty miles. I thought, wow, I wonder how they get anybody to work there. But it turns out it was an ATA company. I can't remember who that was. Red truck? Yeah, 30 cent. There was split. It was different. Loaded and empty was different. I don't like it. And this five loads, I still don't like it because unless you're dropping and hooking, okay, there's too much time spent loading and unloading. There's just too much time. It should be in and out. If you have an appointment at 10, why aren't they unloading at 10 o'clock? I'm there at 9.50. Get, I should have a door number. Get in, get unloaded, and get out. So if, if you're going to drop and hook for five days when five loads, fine. Otherwise, I want a five-day load to take me all the way going somewhere so that I can make some money because the miles are where the money is. There's not a lot of money in stops. If you're sitting there, <coughs> even if they pay you by the hour, it usually doesn't come out. $20, $25, you are still better off driving. You should drive to make the money, not get sit there and make the money, really. Why do they want a load per week less than they get five loads per week? I work when they got versus five loads. I want one load. See, I want a load because it cruises. That's that's the deal. It's easy. I can figure out exactly where I'm gonna park. At the I get up in the morning. I know I'm going over here. Right, I'm gonna park. I like to have the day figured out. I don't like to mess around and then wait around unless they've got loads stacked on you, which is okay, right? Otherwise, you get empty. Go well. We're looking around, right? I don't get paid for that, right, looking around. I want to get, I want to get moving. And I want my free Ghirardelli squares, which are delicious. Just my favorite load, I guess. But cross-country, right, that's that's how I like to do it. See, the difference is you may like to do something different. 
because a lot of people ask me what is the best company or whatever. I don't know. For you, there's people that like running flatbeds, that like running, you know, a friend of mine runs a milk tanker. He likes doing that. I don't wouldn't like doing that probably all the time. It just depends, especially with this natural gas powered truck. That wouldn't be the thing for me. Each person like is going to like something different in the industry. So it just depends, right? Now, if I lived closer, probably I'd probably look at Old Dominion at least to start with, only because they called me a couple of weeks. 59.2 cents to start. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, I drive a hot shot. Uh, okay. Hey, that's all right. Look, see, writing, you drive a hot shot, right? So a pickup truck with a gooseneck, and that works for you. That's perfect. There's so many different things to do in trucking for people that come in. There's something for everybody. There's something for everybody that wants to drive. There's a, I do van, but you know, there's reefer. There's all this different kinds of stuff. It just depends what you want to do. So the company that I might send you to, you're like, oh, well, I, I work there. I don't like it. That's horrible, right? That's just, a, but, but I go, well, I work there and I love it, right? So it just depends. It just depends what you want to do. Now, my favorite kind of truck, you know, I really like Volvo trucks, even though the Volvo I had for a week was horrible because it was all ratted out a half a million miles that I just had as a loaner truck. But on the road, I think the Volvo truck is probably the nicest truck. I had, years ago, I had a Western Star, but I haven't driven one of those in a long time. It was super well put together, but very heavy. The Volvo also heavy, but quiet. And everything, it seems like Volvo has figured out that drivers where they sit, all the controls are right here where you want them. They're like, oh, we took a lot of time to figure out where drivers want the controls. Freightliner is just a flat dashboard. You got to reach across for it, even though I like my Cascadia. Volvo has all the switches better. And the worst one, before somebody asks, international, horrible. Max Force engine, horrible. Don't like it. No power. The switch, it's got this little teeny tiny headlight button, and all the switches are a disaster, and they're not in order. And uh, they're all the switches are the panel of switches. They're all the same size, but they all do different things that you don't necessarily. The thing you need to do all the time is over way over here. And this one that you never use, fifth dual sliders right next to you. Just terrible. Just terrible. Now, Hershey, I like going to Hershey as well. But uh, a lot of those loads that I would get out of Hershey went to the rail for some reason. They went to the railroad yard. And so we would pick, have to go to the railroad and you go to Hershey, pick a load up that's going to California or whatever. But that went to the rail. Oh, that goes 40 miles. Oh, and don't forget, fill the reefer up, too. So you got that time in on that. I got to go sit at the rail yard, drop the truck. Now I don't have a trailer. Then I remember that. I went to Hershey, and then I went right down to the railroad, south of Carlisle somewhere. Dropped it. Didn't have a trailer. And they sent me all the way to Jersey, right, to pick a trailer up, an empty trailer. Even though I just dropped an empty trailer at Hershey, so I could pick this load up. the That's the whole day. The whole day. I don't work there now, by the way. That was the whole day, right? And that's the railroad thing, right? That is just... It's cut all the miles out of everything. If all that stuff paid better, but it didn't. I had to go wash this out and go. So it just that kind of thing just wasn't for me, right? But other people really like it. So it's hard to predict what somebody will like. What do you like to do? Do you want to unload trucks all day and stay in shape? There are jobs that do that, right? You want to just drive across the country, right? And there, that's for me. That's other jobs. You like hooking up doubles and driving them? They're easy to do too. That's simple. Yeah, like my friend with the milk. Drivers should have tanker experience with no baffles, like my friend who hauls milk around. And years ago, I worked for uh, American Citrus in Chicago, and I hauled orange juice around, right? No baffles. So red light, and in the winter, just slide across the intersection. You learn pretty fast, right, how to drive a truck better. I think drivers should have experience in a lot of different trucks if you can do it. Because at some point, you work, may work for a place that has all different kinds of trailers or They'll need you to do something, and you can do it. Because the more things you could do, the more money you can make. So they, oh, right, cars. That's great. That's You know, one thing I haven't done is cars. I've never hauled cars because I'm afraid of the car that I have to put all the way up at the top on the front over the cab in the middle of winter, because I live here in Indiana. i got to drive the thing up there and slide all the way across the top without getting out. And then I gotta open the door and get my fat butt out of the car, or I gotta dukes a hazard it out the window to get myself out of this car without scratching it, because isn't he responsible for all the scratches and all that too? At least they used to be. And I live five miles from Subaru, and they advertise for car haulers all the time. They want people to come and drive, 
And uh, I never go down there. I've never talked to him or anything because of stuff like that. So that's just, just out. I give him a lot of credit for hooking all that up. And then he's got to park and drop the cars off. But it pays really good from what I understand. They down here years ago advertised 10 cents a car a mile. So if you had nine cars, you're, until you got the first one off, that was 90 cents a mile for a company driver. Crazy. But look, if you get all your endorsements, they may ask you to go do something and you can go do it. You say, yeah, I can go do it. You also want to be the person that says, yes, I can do it. Because that's how you're going to make money. You're going to stand out from the other people. We have drivers that won't do anything beyond the bare minimum of what they're supposed to do. Just the least and boom, they hit the door, they're out. It's Friday, they're home. Two seconds are at their house. They don't do anything and then they complain every week. Oh boy, I don't. they never have me do. I don't make any good money. I'm sitting around. Right. Because you won't go do stuff. Can you go get this truck? Yes. Can you take this driver here? Yes. Whatever it is. And then they're always willing to pay extra for it. All right. Well, I've exceeded my 30 minutes. How's it going out there? I don't want to hold everybody up too far today. I know some people don't work. They work on through the holidays. Right? I worked on Christmas. Okay. They called me in. I don't know if I said that right. They called me in on Christmas and I did work that day. We needed a trailer brought back, so I brought it back on Christmas Day. I'm always willing to do that stuff. And some holidays, you know, you just work through. This is all a made-up holiday, right? <laughs> 3,000 water capacity, no baffles. Right. Yeah, that'd be a disaster. <laughs> that's like, yeah, that's a mess. But, you know, that's something that's necessary, right, as a firefighter. You, you're you going to need, why is, the, why is water not baffled anyway, by the way? Why is water not baffled on that one? Why are we not baffling the water tanker? We can baffle that at the... I thought it was only food that's unbaffled, or is that just so it can have more room in there for the water to come out? Because the baffles have holes in them. I don't, I don't understand that one, I guess. I've only hauled uh, some food tankers. Well, I hauled a bulk tanker, but that doesn't need to be baffled, really. Oh, well, you made it yourself. That's awesome. Train hordes, I love them, right? They're probably illegal in most places, but, you know, get those people out of your way. If it, As long as you're not using it to... Uh, you know, wake up the neighborhood or whatever. Yeah, I think a horn should be super loud. Some people need it. When you're coming down the ramp, why you meet me on the ramp, right? That's a good question. I see you coming down the ramp. I'm coming, and I'll, you're meet me all the way down. And then at the end, all the way at the end, up, hit the brakes. Get the heck going. Oh, we could go those kind of ramps forever. But I'm I. Uh, I'm not going to hold everybody up too long here. I do appreciate everybody coming on here. If you have any questions, of course, you can always uh, email me, barbell1223 at uh, gmail.com or get with me through the YouTube channel, of course. I'm going to have more videos coming up this week. If you have any requests or anything, I'm always open for that. I'm going to try to do some of these Q&As here on the weekends. I think it's a great idea that YouTube has put this out there for everybody. So I want everybody to uh, have a great holiday. Thank you for uh, coming in, everybody, and uh, I appreciate that everybody's taking their time out of their Sunday here to come and watch me. It makes me very humble that I started this right and that so many people have come on. It really is. You know, I'm not going to, uh, you know, belabor that too much, but it really is very nice of you to come in and here. Watch my videos. I appreciate it. If there's anything I can do to help anybody, please let me know. I'm always welcome to do that. And um, I want to thank everybody here today, and I want everybody to have a great Sunday, all right? So I'm going to head on out of here. Be safe out there this week, and uh, there'll be more videos. Thanks for coming in. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. See you later.